Okay, this week's golf course was Queenstown Harbor Golf Course Golf Club in Queenstown, Maryland, which is just on the other side of Kent Island across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. It is uh, maybe, um, I guess, about an hour away from D.C., heading out Route 50. So this was a nice course. This was I, one of the courses I played. There's two courses out there. They have a course called the River Course and a Lakes Course. And um, the two courses are uh, significantly different. One runs in, I guess, sort of in figure eight, but on the outside of the... Um, the, the, the Queenstown area, it's sort of to the west, north northwest, I guess, along the Charles River. And it's a big course, not outrageously long from the back tees, but not short either. And I wouldn't say it's a super difficult course, probably about a 135, I'm guessing, um, slope from the back tees. We didn't play the back tees. We only played the blue tees. The blue tees were, some in some cases, significantly up. Uh, they moved the blue tees up to to the white tees on a lot of the holes, and the and while the the back tees were still there, <clears throat> they're actually green on the back tees. There there were many cases when we played today that where the back tees were fifty yards, seventy five yards back behind, even where the blue tees were supposed to be. Not to mention where they were on some court, some holes. So I would say it's um, a significantly challenging course in terms of length from the back tees although i didn't play them because i was playing a, a threesome and i played with the other guys up on the forward tees but i had enough trouble with the length of the course even from the uh, i'd say the intermediate tees the blue tees and um i one of these days i'll go back and maybe play it again from the blacks just to see what it's like but today it was cold windy when we started we started at 9 30 and it had gotten down in the 40s uh overnight and this is out on the on the river charles river and so i didn't want to you know take a lot of chances playing from the back tees and and sure enough i think for the level of play that we were showing and the fact that i was cold through pretty much the, the front side um the the blue tees were a good choice they were good uh good length enough for for a challenge but not too short and certainly um, a good good. I got a good feel for the course playing from them. But if I had played from the back tees, it would have been probably another you know another fifty to seventy five yards on average from the blue tees. So I definitely can say that it's a long enough course for people for who are intermediate players to play even from the blue tees. Not to mention the, the back tees. And the big thing about this course was. As I said, there's two courses. One is sort of a, a normal um, mixture of a woods course and a neighborhood's woods course, but it's closer to Route 50, so there's more road noise on the course, and it runs through more houses, so there's more houses on the course. But the other course, the river course, is not just back towards the river where there really were only maybe four or five houses that we saw on the whole course. And that's largely because they were building three houses at the, at the time on, in the space between the, um, the first green and the, and the second tee box. But um, it was really pretty devoid of houses. There really wasn't a lot, hardly any, almost no road noise whatsoever. And the only thing I really could say that was there in terms of distractions was um, airplanes flying into, I guess, the Kent Island Airport. You could, there were, you know, some, um, small planes, some choppers, not a lot, but still enough. And, you know, we, you noticed it and they weren't low. It wasn't like it's real close to the air, to the airport, but it's close enough where you could see them flying over the course and, and hear them and stuff. But so the course, I think got a very good grade for distractions. Now I would say part of that was because it was early. It was, you know, the first week of April and there weren't any boats out on the water, so no jet skis, no no power boats or anything like that, because we did play a fair number of holes that were very close to the water, if not right there on the water. And I, I think it rates very very well for that in terms of low distractions, good views over the over the river. Um, you can see you know Annapolis and, and Baltimore from a few holes and so forth, and and definitely there's a fair amount of water in the course. The um, verticality is not bad, considering that it's 
a flat course by the river, mainly flat course. But there's enough verticality, enough swales. There's some parts of it that are links and parts of it that are woody, woody where you're playing in a chute and so forth. But overall, I would say it had some verticality, a surprising amount of verticality, considering the fact that it was right there in the river. And I generally have to give this course pretty high marks. Uh, it was long enough, but wide enough. There was some waste, but not too much waste. There was some water, but not too much water. The shots were uh, challenging enough, but not too challenging. And I think overall it was a definitely a you know 125, 130 course and a good, decent challenge of golf. But the one good thing I really liked about it was it was long enough and wide enough and the shots were definitely, you know, um, 420, 430, 440-yard par 4s. Um, I, I guess um, considering the fact we were playing for the Blues, the uh, par 3s were somewhere between 150, 180 yards. We actually had the most trouble with the short one that was downhill. It was only about 125 yards, but, you know, um, Two out of three of us underclubbed it and put balls into the water, and it was a good seventy-five yards from the from the far edge of the of the little inlet there where the water came in to the green. Plenty of room, plenty of space, and I'm like, oh, well, we're all going to screw this up because it's almost too easy. And sure enough, chunk, chunk, boom, 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 you know, two balls into the water, and um, so it wasn't like the kind of course that you know, it was a walk in the park, but it wasn't really hard. The greens were aerated enough but well sanded and and certainly we had the aeration had been done really well where i could tell that the greens were going to come in you know nice and fast and they were cut short and before sanding and there wasn't any of that kind of corduroy crap it was a little slow because they were sanded but not bad it, even considering the fact that they had been sanded it wasn't that slow and i could tell it was going to be a significantly faster greens after they got the sand um down in there and cut it a couple of times. So I, I think that the greens got at least decent marks and they're probably gonna be pretty good later during the season. Overall, the course really had little, if anything, to complain about. It was uh, fairly windy with the wind coming in off the, off the river and that certainly uh, affected our shots significantly. The, um, you know, the first hole, we I think the, out of the threesome we put three balls into the water and um, it was, there was enough water in enough places to make the, the course a definite challenge just due to the water and uh, certainly a challenge due to the fact that we were a little bit on the cold side and, and it, you know, it, it took us a while to warm up and everything, but it was a good round of golf and they have a really nice clubhouse, a nice bar. They had, they had um, three people, four people working in the, in the kitchen area. They had a cart actually running around and the only thing, you know, yeah, it was, it was $75 to play that course, and the other course is only $35, but I think it was a good deal. It was a good experience. I can certainly say that there was very little about this course that was annoying. It was decent. It wasn't the world's most challenging or most interesting course, but it was challenging enough and interesting enough, and it was a good round. So I, I think I'll have to give this course a, a B plus. It could have been a little bit more vertical, a little bit more interesting, but it definitely brought some, you know, great views over water and stuff into into the, the um, equation that you don't see on a lot of courses where you just don't have, you know, this this oceanside slash riverside perspective. It reminded me a lot of um, Swan Point in that regard, but it had much more in terms of views than Swamp Point. And it didn't have the sections of Swamp Point where there are a lot of houses. It didn't have the some of the gigantic carries that you see at Swamp Point, certainly like number two or, or um, number 13 and number 14, where you have to hit 250 over a waist to carry from the back tees. But it did have some good carries on it. I think it was a, a decent course, a solid B plus. I'm a little tempted to give it an A minus, but it, it wasn't all that impressive. It was okay. I could give it an A minus. I could say it's a, a strong B plus. That's Queenstown Harbor in Queenstown, Maryland, just on the other side of Kent Island, east towards um, um, Delaware on Route 301.